now I move to questions. The Minister of Environment. And again, we start with topical questions. Could I just take this opportunity, first of all, of welcoming the new Minister uh, to the Chamber and wish him well in his new appointment? And I know I speak for the whole House uh, when I say that. Jim Wells, Mr. Wells. Speaker, could I concur with you in, in congratulating the Honourable Member for Foyle on his appointment? And I understand that I have the privilege of being the first person ever to ask him a question, which I relish. I could ask him about his policy on Rees Muntjac or the conservation of the Great Skewer, or will he sign the Our House Convention? But I won't. I won't. I will ask him. Does he feel that the planning service of which he's the minister has adequate powers of enforcement? Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, and, and Mr. Wales, for your kind words of, of welcome and in, encouragement. Plan and enforcement, and sometimes perceived lack thereof, is a great source of, uh, to, of frustration to all of us as elected representatives, as indeed it is uh, to the general public. Enforcement is a key priority for the Department, and a number of its enforcement powers have indeed been enhanced over recent years through a series of legislative amendments. Changes have included increased use of improved IT management systems to monitor performance, use of weekly management reports by officers to ensure proactive management of individual cases and the identification of trends, delivery of staff training, and all area offices have a dedicated enforcement team now. My predecessor, Minister Atwood, convened an enforcement summit to consider compliance and enforcement functions, and specifically to consider what measures are currently deployed in dealing with enforcement and how they could be improved. I intend to follow up on these discussions to ensure the delivery of an enforcement system that is more robust, more adequately resourced, and operates as an effective deterrent to environmental and planning crimes. Mr. Wells. Oh, it's all very interesting, Mr. Speaker, but if the newly crowned minister would happen to delve into his files, he'll find a very thick one marked in a brogue venison. And he'll find a series, a litany of letters from me and many residents about that case. And I see the Honourable Member for, for West Belfast smiling because he's a world authority on Finnebrook venison. And what that case showed is that if a developer is. If the developer is prepared to run a coach and horses through the legislation, he can do so, and the only reaction you'll get from the planning service is, what do you expect to do, do with it? It's already there. I know uh, Finnebrogue venison is something very dear to Mr Wells' heart. Hello. <laughs> I, I'm not sure the analogy of a coach and horses is appropriate when discussing a meat processing plant. <laughs> I am aware of the protracted enforcement history on the site involving formal enforcement action by the Department on a number of occasions in response to the carrying out of unauthorised development. This goes back to a time when planning permission was first granted for a game handling plant as far back as the year 2000. I can confirm that the current development on site has received approval, but with that approval came 12 planning conditions. And I, I have instructed planning officials to monitor the site and ensure that these conditions are implied with, complied with. Declan McAleer. Mr. McAleer. Uh, Graham Elgood, uh, Concordia. Um, I'd like to ask the Minister if all of the 11 uh, local government st statutory transition committees have, have been established uh, under the, the, the July 2013 guidelines, uh, statute, the statutory transition guidelines. I thank the, the member for that question. All bar one of the statutory transition committees has been established, and that is Belfast. That is more down to issues in Lisburn and Castlereagh councils rather than Belfast itself. There have been some well-documented uh, issues with the establishment of transition committees right across the council areas where some councils have chosen to ignore the guidelines issued by the Department in the selection of members for the STCs. Uh, um, in situations where the councils have ignored the guidelines, does the Minister have the power to intervene and reappoint committees? I have uh, issued a directive to my uh, officials to research and find out what exactly I can do in this regard. They are currently 
drawing up regulations that will hopefully empower me to direct the councils to rerun the selection process using one of the three approved methods. That's the haunt, sunt lag, or the single transferable vote in order to secure a proper and proportionate representation on the STCs. This has to be run in accordance with the vote at the last council elections in 2011 in order to fully reflect the democratic will of the people in those areas. And failure to do so, and I am disappointed at councils who continue to fail to apply these procedures, but failure to do so is basically a blatant flout of the democratic will of those people. Anna Lowe. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And like yourself, I would like to welcome the Minister to his first question time and wish him well uh, during his term of office. Um, yeah. Can I ask the Minister, would he consider intervening the attempt to close explorers yeah, on the, ground, yeah. on the yeah. grounds of the lack of an EQIA, yeah. the lack of a public consultation and the lack of a financial impact study? I uh, thank the, the member again for her congratulations and welcome, and look forward to working with Ms. Lowe in her capacity as uh, Environment Committee Chair. I understand that the final decision regarding the future of Explorers will not be made until Wednesday night, and it would be premature to comment really on, until then. I have, however, asked my officials to meet with council officials after Wednesday night's meeting to discuss the details. I have received quite a bit of correspondence on this issue over the past few days. The impact of this closure will be felt not only by the, the hundreds or thousands of school children who attend here for educational visits every year, but it will also be keenly felt in the local economy with a great loss to businesses, not just where the aquarium is situated, but also in Strangford. I want to thank the Minister for his answer. Um, without proper consultation by the Arts Borough Council, would the Minister accept this is a case of maladministration and ask for a deferral of this decision? Well, I, again, I will have to wait until the outcome of Wednesday night's meeting and the discussions between my own officials and Council officials. As regards intervention, I believe it should not fall solely on the Department of Environment. I mentioned earlier the amount of educational visits that uh, take place or, or visit uh, Explorers Aquarium and, as well, the reliance of the Strangford Ferry on visitors to the aquarium. I believe that we could look at a, a collaborative cross-departmental approach or intervention, but, again, all that will be pending the outcome of Wednesday night's meeting. William Humphrey. Mr. Humphrey. Speaker, and I too welcome the Minister to the dispatch box and wish him well as he carries out his work for the people of Northern Ireland. Can I ask the Minister what progress is being made regarding ARC 21 and recycling targets for Northern Ireland? Oh, I thank the, the Minister for, or the member for his question. He's not, not a Minister yet. Hopefully someday, so I can ask him a question that he can't find the answer for. <laughs> Uh, ARC 21 is currently in the process of seeking a new location or proposed location. There were difficulties around their uh, planning application on the previous site. However, negotiations are now ongoing with my department to, ask, to find a suitable site for their uh, gasification plant. Being from the FOIL constituency, I am well acquainted with the arguments and debate that surrounds such waste infrastructure. However, I am unfortunately all too aware also of the need for such infrastructure to help us deal with the ongoing problems facing us as we attempt to deal with waste and reduce the amount of waste produced and then sent to landfill. Um, thank you very much, Minister. Minister, if the, uh, the, the progress is not made that you envisage and the timescale that you envisage, uh, will there be infractions for Northern Ireland and what will level will they be? Well, there, there is a degree of urgency with how uh, these applications are processed, and that is due to the threat of infractions and the, the resulting fines coming from Europe. That is why I think it is incumbent that we all do work together. We work together to deal with those 
or address the concerns of those who are objecting to these plants before we face the prospect of real and extremely significant I don't have the exact figures here, but they are extremely significant fines that will have significant impacts on our ratepayers here. Banks. Mr Banks. Uh, following on from that line of question, and can I too congratulate the, the, the Minister on his, his appointment? But uh, since coming into office, has the Minister been briefed by Art 21 in terms of new infrastructure investment? I have not yet uh, had a meeting with Arc 21. I have met with their counterparts who, who are dealing with the plant in my own constituency, the North West uh, Regional Waste Management Group. I do expect to meet with Arc 21 in the not too distant future and have spoken with other elected members on the situation there. Roy Banks. Would the Minister agree that it is vital that uh, the value for money aspect of any proposal is carefully looked at? and that also that uh, the location is carefully selected and that in determining the capacity of the site that it will be a, an appropriate size given the changing uh, conditions in terms of uh, consumer values uh, and new processes that are coming in and we do not pay for something which is excessive to what our future needs would be? Yes, I would agree. <laughs> No, uh, it, it is imperative that, that these plants do represent value for money. So while I've spoken of the danger and real risks involved of fines coming from Europe, and we don't want to saddle ratepayers with those, it's important that we don't saddle ratepayers with a white elephant either. Pam Brown. Thank you, Mr Speaker. And can I also welcome the newly appointed Minister to his position and also look forward to working to, with him uh, through, in my capacity as the new Vice Chair of the Environment. Uh, could I ask the Minister for his assessment of the Cotton Mount landfill site at Mollusk following the ongoing resident concern over odour pollution? I uh, thank the member for her question and congratulate her on her own appointment as a Deputy Chair of the Environment Committee. And in that capacity, I, I look forward to working with her. As regards the specific question, unfortunately, I am not fully appraised of the detail of that. However, I would be happy to meet the member and discuss it further at a later date. Pam Brown. Thank you, Mr Speaker, and thank you, Minister, for that answer. Um, really, I am seeking assurance for the residents that, um, of Molusk that the inspections and monitoring of Cotton Mount site will be increased um, in the future. So I look forward to meeting you on that subject. Sorry, Minister. Sorry. Uh, I can, uh, assure the member that this site will be subject to the full rigours of Northern Ireland Environment Agency enforcement and monitoring in order to reduce or eradicate any detrimental impacts that it is having to residents in the area of the site. Order members. Question number seven. Mr Allister is not in his place. Move on to Chris Little. Mr Little. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I to extend my congratulations to the Minister. Can I ask the Minister um, whether he would be minded as part of the local government reform to introduce a standardised regional policy of uh, union flag flying on designated days at all councils? I thank the, the member for that question. My predecessor raised flags, or sorry, raised the issue of flags at the political reference group meetings in the context of the local government reform process. And at its last meeting in June, members commented that it would be sensible to give the First Minister and Deputy First Minister's proposals, which are now the Haas talks, space to develop and see what happens in the wider cultural context about flags. Thank the Minister for his response. In, in the event that the, the Haas uh, talks process would not identify an appropriate solution, would, it, would the Minister then be minded to consider introducing a policy? It is certainly something that I will look at. I think it is important to at this early stage, when we are already facing uh, difficulties in the establishment of STCs and trying to ensure harmonisation in the new STCs that we do not bring an issue as divisive as this to the table unnecessarily. Questions. We now move on to oral questions.